Hey guys, Todd Helms with Eastman's out here today to bring you a rifle review on the Weatherby Backcountry 2.0 Carbon. Impact. That's three for three at a thousand yards with the Weatherby Backcountry 2.0. All right, so while I've got you here, drop down and mash that subscribe button. Drop down in the comments, let us know what else you wanna see. Leave us any comments or questions that you have. I'll get back to you as quickly as I can on those and make sure that you're a subscriber. Because if you're a subscriber, guess what? You're gonna get this stuff fed to you on a daily basis here at From Eastman's. So I'm gonna walk down through all the specs on this gun. As usual, she's kind of a sweetheart to me, I guess you could say. I got to actually partially work with this gun at the Weatherby factory late this summer. Right before its release date, Adam and the crew had us come over for a writer's event and I was able to be part of that where we got to put this particular exact rifle through the paces at Weatherby's new shooting complex over in Sheridan. This is outfitted with the Thompson long range system, the scope, the reticle, the level, all the whole shoot and match. And I just walked this thing at my own personal range here, right out to a thousand yards, three consecutive hits in a five point six pound rifle this whole package weighs less than eight pounds and to be able to do that with a hunting rifle to just walk it out pretty much right out of the box to a thousand yards is phenomenal it's phenomenal weatherby has the secret sauce with this rifle and the thompson long range setup in the 3378 the 65 300 and the 257 weatherby to give you a no nonsense, no dialing, long range shooting system. The heart and soul of this system is the Backcountry 2.0 Carbon. That's this rifle, it gets its name from a carbon fiber barrel. And what's really cool, look at that stock. This is the brand new Peak 44 Black Tooth stock. This is made right in Sheridan, Wyoming, and it is proprietary. It's the lightest carbon fiber stock that you can buy for a rifle at this time. It comes on the new Backcountry 2.0, but you can buy it as a component stock and retrofit it to whatever rifle you have as well. Adam promised a few years back when they moved to Sheridan that he was gonna do big things. Well, guess what? If this is any indication of what Weatherby is going to continue to do as far as innovation is concerned, I'm on board, I'm a fan. I've shot this rifle, three or four boxes of ammunition through it now. It continues to shoot sub MOA groups at every single yardage that I engage with it. So chamberings for the all weather Weatherby Mark V Backcountry 2.0 Carbon are gonna start with 257 Weatherby, 6.5 Creedmoor, 6.5 Weatherby RPM, 6.5 300 Weatherby, 300 Weatherby Magnum, and then the granddaddy of them all, the 3378 Weatherby Magnum. I don't know about you, but a 3378 in a tiny, in a lightweight rifle like this, man, I'm thinking that's gonna be a dragon. I think it's gonna be Punisher, just terrible. But with the AccuBrake ST that Weatherby's designed, and this, this one is titanium to maintain the right balance in this lightweight rifle, they put a steel muzzle brake on the end of that, it's gonna to wanna to be nose heavy and it's gonna ruin the balance. And balance is important in a hunting rifle, especially a lightweight one. But back to the 3378 Weatherby Magnum. Adam and the crew over there in Sheridan did extensive testing to make sure that these dual tension carbon barrels that they've gone to are not only accurate, the most accurate carbon barrel that they have found but can stand the abuse that a cartridge like a 3378 is going to, to dish out. Adam told uh, the crew while we were over there that they set these barrels, have set a new accuracy benchmark and accuracy records for the Weatherby company. And I'm not going to tell you exactly what that number was, but they did it with a 300 Weatherby Magnum and it's way smaller than a half an MOA. That's impressive. That is impressive, especially in a lightweight rifle. 
You know, you can make a rifle that weighs 15 pounds, big bench rest gun, and shoot little bug hole groups all day. And it's like, yeah, that's great. I can't take that into country like this to hunt antelope or deer or sheep or elk or whatever. I can't do that with a big heavy rifle, but I can do that with a rifle that's lightweight, nimble, and well-balanced like the Backcountry 2.0 Carbon. So let's start with the stock on the Backcountry 2.0 Carbon. It has the sponge style paint scheme. This one is in like tan or brown FDE and an olive. I think it's really attractive and it matches the Patriot Brown Cerakote on the action of this rifle. But this is what's phenomenal about this stock. I told you earlier, it's the lightest carbon fiber stock on the market at the time, at this current time. Weatherby was actually able to shave it all the way down. So they're like 20 ounces, 20 ounces with this black tooth stock from Peak 44. That's unheard of. Most of your carbon fiber stocks on hunting rifles are in that 22, 24, 26, 28 ounces. And those are light but they're not as light as the Blacktooth. That alone saves this rifle a lot in the weight column. But Weatherby wasn't done there. What they wanted to do is make sure that, you know what, if we're gonna rework the backcountry lineup, it's gotta be perfect, and then we've gotta be able to shave some weight off what we've already done. The Peak 44 Blacktooth stock, phenomenally comfortable platform. I don't know if you can see that well, but it's kinda got a reverse comb makes it really easy for me to get into. I have a fairly long neck and a fairly high cheek, and I like a high combed rifle. Weatherby's traditional style stocks have always fit me extremely well, as do as they do taller, longer shooters. My wife, for example, is uh, five feet 10 inches tall and really long and lean. She likes that high cheek piece on the Weatherby rifles, that Monte Carlo style stock. While they did not put the Monte Carlo style stock on here to save weight, they did keep that traditional Weatherby angled forend. So you can look at that forend and go, that's a Weatherby. That's the whole point. When they designed the Peak 44 Blacktooth, they wanted it completely revolutionary, but they wanted to be able to, you to look at it and say, yeah, that's a Weatherby. So while we're talking about the black tooth carbon fiber stock, we got to talk about this 3D hex recoil reducer as well. Call it a recoil reducer, not a recoil pad because it does reduce recoil. This is the second generation of these. Uh, the first generation was really good, but Weatherby saw some room for improvement. And so they went back to the drawing board and kind of revamped it a little bit. This is obviously shaped differently to fit the black tooth stock. It's a little bit stiffer than the originals, which I like. I like the fact that it's a little bit firmer, but the whole cool thing about the 3D hex is it's got all these voids inside. It is the only 3D printed recoil pad or recoil reducer on the market. This thing has all these voids or holes in it in little hex shapes. What that does is as the gun recoils, those compress, those voids compress, and they lengthen out the amount of time that, this reco that the recoil is affecting the shooter. It cuts down on felt recoil in big magnum chamberings like the 65300 immeasurably. I mean, there's probably, we probably can measure it. I'm not a huge numbers guy. I just know that when I shoot this thing, it feels softer than it than other 65300s that I have or have cur or have shot. As with all Weatherby Mark 5s, you're guaranteed sub MOA accuracy with this. As long as you're shooting premium factory ammunition or Weatherby factory ammunition and I got to say I've shot the 127 grain LRX loading out of this and it's sub MOA. It's smaller than sub MOA. It's an absolute tack driver, which is incredible when you think about the amount of speed and force and just powder being burned in a 65300 Weatherby that I could literally shoot little tiny bug hole groups with that big Magnum. It does it, especially surprising in a rifle that weighs less with the scope and everything is tipping the scales at less than eight and a half pounds. All right, so our action. We have the standard 54 degree bolt lift, but you look at this bolt, 
and it's spiral fluted and they're deep flutes. Again, not satisfied with where they were with the original backcountry, great rifle. I've done a review on that as well. My dad killed a great antelope buck a couple years ago with the backcountry TI in 65300 Weatherby. Drop down, there'll be a link. You can go check that review out. But back to this all revamped, redesigned setup here in the backcountry 2.0 carbon. Well, we want to cut weight. We want to make this thing lighter. We want to make this thing higher performance. So what do they do? They spiral flute that bolt. And it's not just big, deep spiral flutes. What it does is it decreases surface area on the bolt as well as cuts weight. And it actually makes it slide incredibly smoothly. If I open this thing up, it falls right open. Even with the fluted bolt, we still have that traditional 54 degree bolt lift that Weatherby is famous for. Not the 90 degree comes all the way up. What that 54 degree does is it makes faster cycling because you don't have to throw that bolt all the way up here. You just bring it up, boom, and it's, that's pretty quick. Weatherby's famous for that, 54 degree bolt throw. We have a skeletonized lightweight bolt knob. This bolt handle is trimmer. There's been extra material taken out of the top of the bolt here on the Mark V. The Mark V action is strong, it's accurate, and now it's lightweight. Gotta love that. This is a Trigger Tech trigger. Weatherby's been doing that for a while now, so pretty much since they moved to Sheridan, they started getting Trigger Tech triggers in all their Mark Vs. And I gotta tell you, I'm a huge fan of the Trigger Tech triggers. Like all premium triggers, it's gonna perform, but I like the adjustability and I like the, the way that the Trigger Techs tr just work. I like the way they feel, I like the way they break. For me, the Trigger Tech trigger is a win in this rifle. So going out to the end of the barrel, we've got the AccuBrake ST. That's a big one, right? Well, that's the titanium version. Like I said earlier, it helps balance this rifle out. It's balanced perfectly right in the middle. If it was steel, it would be nose heavy. Nobody would want to carry that thing around. The AccuBrake ST reduces recoil by up to 53%, which I don't know about you, but in a lightweight platform like this, with a big powerful chambering, like a 6.5 300, that's a lot of recoil to soak up into your shoulder. Why not mitigate that with a high quality muzzle brake? Now, do I hunt with that? You bet. I just make sure I have hearing protection, and before I shoot, I put my hearing protection in, and I can hunt with this. Doesn't damage my hearing. At the range, I double up. I use foam plugs and uh, headphones, but I do that anyway anymore because my ears have gotten sensitive as I've gotten a little older, and I like to keep what hearing I have left, actually. So, the muzzle brake on this, the AccuBrake ST, great addition to the lineup. And thank you, Weatherby, for making this one titanium because it just makes this perfectly balanced. All right, the carbon fiber barrel that helps add to the name Backcountry 2.0 Carbon is sweet. I remember the first carbon barrel Weatherby that I shot uh, years ago, actually killed a pretty nice mule deer buck with that over in the Black Hills oh, yeah. and was very impressed with that rifle. Weatherby has since gone away from that particular barrel and done something a little bit different. This is a dual tensioned carbon fiber barrel. It's tensioned here and it's tensioned here. What that does is it allows whether it be to fine tune the rigidity on the steel barrel that's inside here. Now, 95% of this carbon does not touch the steel barrel that's inside there. So it's touched here and here and all this length is free floating. So this is like a carbon fiber tube that your steel barrel sits inside of. That does a couple things. It allows you to fine tune the tension on that steel barrel by twisting here and twisting here, but it also provides exceptional cooling. Because there's air surrounding all of this, we know air is a great insulator, but it's also a great cooling agent. All of the firearms that I shoot with carbon fiber barrels tend to cool down a lot faster than my steel barreled rifles do. No exception with this one. Big monster chamberings like the Weatherby Magnums produce a lot of heat. There's a lot of gas that flows through here. A lot of heat gets built up. You can eat up barrels and throats of barrels if you're not careful. The carbon fiber system 
that Weatherby puts on this backcountry 2.0 carbon mitigates that really, really nicely. This rifle cools extremely well. I have not personally actually timed it with a timer, but to go from cold shot to cold shot on this rifle, you're looking at a matter of minutes versus 20, 15, 20, 30 minutes on steel rifles. And it may even be longer on some of those steel barreled rifles. So we've got the hinged floor plate on the Weatherby Backcountry 2.0 carbon and got some fresh new artwork that Weatherby designed and put on there. It looks sweet. All right, so you wrap all of this goodness up and then you slap a bunch of Cerakote on it because two reasons, Cerakote's cool and it's super tough. I mean, I could literally use this thing as a canoe paddle if I needed to. <whistles> Frere Jacques. Not that I want to use a rifle this nice as a canoe paddle, but I could. Again, this is the steel version. There's a titanium version as well that's even lighter than this one, substantially lighter. It's a little bit more money, but it's titanium. You're going to pay for that titanium. You're going to pay for that reduced weight even over the steel version. Personally, out of the two, I like the way the steel version looks. I know, I know. Way to be shallow, Todd. But got to be honest with you. I like the paint scheme on this one. I like this Patriot Brown Cerakote on both the AccuBrake ST and the Action. I like the FDE complements on the stock, the olive, the olive sponge blotches on this thing. I just think it looks sharp. This thing to me just looks like it belongs in Elk Camp. If you are in the market for a new lightweight hunting rifle, guys, it doesn't get much better than the Weatherby Mark V Backcountry 2.0. So thank you again for watching. Until next time, We'll see you in the field.